Get down, boys, let me see you shit. Whoever shits first lives. Sir, you're in danger! Get down! I'm so over your weird cosplay, I swear to Christ. Not now, Stan. Who the fuck are you? Uh, we're we're a, we're a documentary crew. What are you documenting? Excuse me, where is your handicap placard? You How about it? you learn to get your fucking ass off my car and I park wherever the fuck I want? Fuck! Hello, I'm Susan Sassy, and I'm here with the cast of Artists in Agony. I thought it would be good to introduce yourself, the character you played, and just a tiny bit about the character in case people are seeing this more as a promo for the film but haven't seen the film yet and kind of aren't 100% what's going on. I'm Kenneth Louie. I'm the writer and director and orchestrator, cajoler, seducer <laughs> of uh, Artists in Agony. I'm just responsible for this mess. <laughs> He's an appropriate seducer. I am uh, Jason Frost, and I play uh, Frosty. I don't know how we came up with my character name. It's uh, you know, it's a mystery. We'll just um, we'll just have to keep that. Way. I just don't trust you as an actor. I just thought you might forget your character name, so I just made it easy for you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought it was making it easy for everyone else. Uh, I uh, I'm one of the uh, one of the the, the the coolest assassins <laughs> in the movie. Um, Everyone else wants to be me, I think. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of stories about other people that aren't as important as mine. <laughs> Take away. I'm Ariadne Schaefer, and I play mm -hmm. Lucian Mercy. I am one of the Mercy Sisters, a uh, family of famous assassins. And I am an assassin who is struggling with the fact that she's also a housewife and trying to figure out her place in the world. I'm Kate, and I play Jewel, who turns into... Lady Faith. Um, my character doesn't come into this film already an established assassin, just an innocent pet store worker who steps into this world to become quite the powerful and famous assassin and loses it a little, but still a badass. Still a badass to the end. I'm Melanie Nelson and I play Angel Mercy, the sister of Lucian Mercy. Angel is throughout this film kind of struggling with what it is to be on her own and kind of finding a lot of emotion within that. Uh, hi, I'm Pal McQueen. I play Red Rick. He believes he is the best assassin in many universes. And then he falls in love. <laughs> His life goes, goes all up in the air. Uh, so yeah, that, that's a, uh, that's a description of my character. And I just wanted to say this too, Ken, it's very rare that artists are offered the opportunity through characters to experience their own life over a 10 year period. And you've offered that to us. I'm really grateful because there were nights, you know, and days where this was difficult now to know that, that you, that you got through this, that you did this, that we all did, and that we now have something that we can literally see stages of our life through these characters. It's a precious gift, man, so thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen, seriously. I just knew that I wanted it to be something special and just kept, you know, throwing the challenge at you guys and you guys rose the occasion. So I just, I'm grateful for you guys, so. So um, I saw the film, I thought it was hilarious, and I, I was, one of my first things that came to mind was I was wondering how much of your performance was improv and how much was scripted. Depends on the day. Depends on like, the day. <laughs> what was it like doing a movie this way instead of normally they're scripted? So this being improv, I'm sure it was a different process for you. Ken gave me a hello in a weird fucking way. Ken, you're gonna edit this. No, I'm not. Sorry. <laughs> Ken presented this idea to me. I was really excited about the improv. Mostly, in all honesty, um, I, I didn't know uh, many of the other actors involved, but I, but I knew Kate, right? And, um, and I had always wanted to work with Kate. And um, we were presented with this opportunity to work together in an extremely intimate way 
um, that felt very, very fresh and uh, safe uh, for both of us. My character was developed out of my feelings for Kate with Aww. regards to this project. Um, I, I just kind of sat back into appreciating the energy with which I was being given the opportunity to respond. I didn't settle into the chaos and kookiness of the character because I think that was just there. I tend to be kind of a kook anyway. So, um, but yeah, for me, it was all about that. And that, that was my through line. Uh, can I just interrupt one second? I don't know what Paul just said, but I had forgotten how sexy of a voice he has. Oh, well, I appreciate that, Jason. Huh? <laughs> mm, okay. I never forget I that. All righty then. Those aren't pillows. <laughs> I, I felt better doing it, honestly. Like, scripts are great, but they can make me nervous. We did have um, some scripting in at least one scene, like the, the fight scene. Um, but other than that, I mean, it, it's really nice to just know kind of that there's a framework to work within and that you're trusted to just organically bring your character to that. And I mean, ultimately yourself, because the character, like I, I listen to my character speak and I'm like, well, that's, that's how I speak. <laughs> I was happy and I really felt like more of a collaborator than I typically do in other projects. I mean, I did, I, I would write lines for the actors to maybe hit once in a while. Like, so if I wanted to see how, but how they got there was completely up to them. Yeah. And that's, that's what I mean about like the framework, right? Like that's just, okay, this is what we're working with. That's where I got to get. I mean, it's kind of like, like, you know, how the 48 hour film festival gives you those like few things that you got to use. And then you just see what everyone does with it. It's awesome. Great. Ariadne, what was it like for you to do a film that was mostly improv? Well, I loved it. I, I don't come from a big improv background. I have done some, but I'm definitely much more in the scripted world. But I am also a writer. And so uh, this brought that side out for me. So, And the other actors were so fantastic that we, it was just, it truly was, like Melanie and I didn't, really know each other before this but like from the first moment we sat down and we're like okay what if this and what if this I mean it just becomes a fantastic game of what if that starts even before the camera turns on where you just say okay so we're sisters what's that like let's let's have some fun with that um so it was definitely again I felt like I got to bring a lot more be a lot more a part of the of the creation process than when you're just a and only get to do the acting not the creation mm -hmm. so yeah it was uh i i loved it and i've worked with kenneth a lot and i adore it so i knew that i could trust where i was and that we would get to an interesting place i will echo everything ariadne said i i i don't come from a an improv background um i love uh, working with Ken and uh, you know the first part of this movie um, was I was dealing with uh, my son having just been born or some level of sleep deprivation yeah. and um, uh, most of that is uh, improv in a, um, a tired new dad kind of way rather than any sort of talent um, so as time got, went on uh, my son was old enough to be terrified uh, by Kate um, and, and, and she still bears the scars. Uh, <laughs> she's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I think oh I'm scarring God. this child. Now, he's almost 11, and there are cuts in there of me tossing him up as a little baby. We talked, Ken and I uh, initially talked about this whole concept idea um, when my wife was still pregnant. Yeah, the improv part was, uh, was just, you know, the same thing as not knowing any lines uh, you know, <laughs> in the play yet. And yet you're still talking about your character and all that kind of stuff. So, um, it was, uh, it was very organic and, and, uh, you trusted uh, Ken not to make you look like a buffoon, which he, uh, seemed to mostly manage. <laughs> mostly. <laughs> mostly. The fear of it though, is, um, from that acting perspective, like the fear of not being able to write efficiently to get to where Kenneth wants to go. I'm not saying that that fear is super present. Um, I would just say that that was a, that presents its own challenge 
compared to when you are given a script and then you just are able to do the work to make it make that story get told. So it was very alive and very electric. Um, and yeah, Paul and I were in a theater company together, uh, but we had not yet worked together. Um, and most of our scenes were together. And the other element of it is as much as this film is a comedy, we had a lot of dramatic scenes. So that dramatic flavor of improv is also super fun. No, I was the only person in this industry no. that I could trust. No, you shot me the same place. You made me look like a fool. No, no. Yes, everybody else knows. I just, you are they the boring light. Ow, 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 you shot that me That was the supposed dick. to be the beginning of the something dick. incredible. Oh, so the, no, so the, the, the non-truth that oh, I didn't no, tell no, you about no, Rockstar no, was only no, to embolden our relationship even more. But that makes zero sense. That's what I love about, I've done, the, I've done many, many projects with Kenneth and he, he lets me do things that nobody else does. Like he puts me, he, he gives me roles that I am not typically cast as. And that's, I, I really love that. I realized that she would be willing to, to dance with me that way. And then it was just free, you know, it was just free. Um, I remember we discovered, we, we discovered quite a bit about the characters that first night, if I, if I remember correctly, right, Kate? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, improv is, is, is just listening. You know, that's all it is, right? Listening and then intuitively reacting, at least the way I've learned, um, rather than going in your mind. So I was able to stay in my gut with Kate and not overthink things. And, and Ken, you know, Ken just runs, man. He'll, he'll follow you, you know. He'll watch you do anything. You know, he'll just go with you. And then if he doesn't like what he's seeing, he's great because he'll stop it and say, okay. And he does that thing with his fingers in front of his mouth and he's thinking... <laughs> and then I'll give you another route. So it was great. I'm getting off, yeah. off um, no. topic. I could I not have asked for a better dance partner to, to improv with, particularly in a, in a project, again, where we, we figured out a very deep relationship very quickly. So it was, it was really cool. That, that day that uh, I, I, some, act, some actress didn't show up to, to play um, Paul's girlfriend. Uh, and I was supposed to just do this one scene um basically breaking up with him uh and instead you know this is kind of like let's just try one where she's into it no. you kill people you kill people I... and that is so fucking cool and you never told me and that pisses me off <sighs> oh we can do anything we can just be in this scene we can just e experience what the hell we're gonna give to each other and land in this mysterious place where suddenly now I'm a main character in the movie? What? <laughs> Melanie, what was it like to sustain a role for so long? For me personally, it actually sustained me. Um, I actually, I left LA at the end of 2015 after I pretty much had wrapped out of this film. But I mean, for, for years, it, it kept me going. Like it was something that I knew that I could count on you know i wasn't like calling and begging for scenes but you know when kenneth and mariano were like hey we're gonna do this i'm like yes because it kept me engaged in acting in something that you know again like i felt like i was really part of i loved it yeah it was uh it was a nice way to because it felt like we were a whole community building something building something together rather than just um being used in something and uh, so the amount of time kind of allowed the friendships to grow because Melanie, Melanie and I weren't just sisters for, you know, three days when we shot a scene. We were playing sisters for like six years or something. The thing about this, it was, it was so much fun was the amount of strategy time as well as the acting time. Um, that it was, it was the actors uh, were really um, more than actors. We were storytellers. Uh, figuring it out as we went, uh, changing the story as um, a, someone would come uh, uh, drop out of the uh, of the film um, or not, uh, you know, uh, there, this was the plan. Now the plan is uh, this other thing um, because of who's there and who's willing and who's not. And, and um, so this was a, 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 a very unique, very unique uh, uh, process. I have played villainous roles in various things, but not as often as I am many other types of characters. So it is like, oh, I get to go back to this powerful, badass, villainous place. I will 
very honestly say that there were times that I grew frustrated with the process for sure because <laughs> yeah because the story would change and, and you and you had this sense of like everybody else was becoming family so it was like what was that film what was that boyhood or something that oh, they yeah. for 12 years yeah. um and you know I heard I would hear them interviewed about it sometimes about how this like this touchstone they got to come back to every summer when they would shoot the next part of it and it 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 just resonated so strongly because yeah this is a super super unique way to make a film um what if we don't ever finish it i'll be so sad <laughs> it was a little trippy cuz you know we invest right you 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 invest and i mean wow we were shooting this for what 6 to 7 maybe 8 years you know there were a couple relationships that I went through in my life. And there were times when I'm going back to revisit with Kate in our relationship, our love story, and then, oh yeah, back into life. And then, oh yeah, okay. Um, so it was a little trippy, but but I think because the material was so open, um, you know, and, and the character was so much fun to find. I mean, for me, it was incredible. It was really incredible to kind of, be feeling almost like um, almost like I came into existence without a full memory and I was remembering my backstory as we were filming. <laughs> so like more of my own backstory was coming to me as we were filming. And that was a fascinating process. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I wouldn't say it was difficult. I would say it was a beautiful challenge because most of it was improv. And Ken was like, here's the box. If you want to jump out of the box, do it, play in the box or whatever. So it was really not difficult. So we've said a lot that it was a long time, but how many years specifically? Uh, I would say it depends on who you ask, but I think uh, it was about eight years. Eight years. Mm -hmm. That's almost a decade. Yeah. That is, that's. How long ago from now? Because then there was post. Yeah. Oh, oh. Um, well, if you want. I think it had to be 2012 or 2013, the, the time that I went. Yeah, I was, I, I'm pretty certain it was 2011 when- Yeah, I can years. tell you for sure it was end of 2010 and uh, early 2011 because my son was born March 17th, 2011. And we were having conversations while my wife was pregnant. Um, right. and, and, you have a biomarker. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I will not forget yeah, when we started this. 2011, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Because here's the thing, they messed up by being such good actors. So, okay, you give me these really good actors, and then I have this really cool idea about kind of showing the bungling side of, you know, assassins. You always see the cool, stylish side. Well, what, what, what if they're just, you know, just like a Spinal Tap kind of-esque type of group that they're full of themselves? And finally, I, I asked them, like, hey, guys, okay. I think we can come to a finale and kill everybody. <laughs> just give me one day and I can just kill everybody in a crazy massacre and, and actually kind of tie it all together and make it work as an interesting uh, piece, so. But Ken, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, didn't the kernel of this idea start as like, a, things are slow, you weren't even gonna tell people, you just wanted people to talk about acting. The, the kernel the kernel came from hanging out with my friend who said that he wanted he was like uh, he he just broke up with his girlfriend I was trying to cheer him up and he, he just turned to me and said hey Ken I would love to be in a project could you make a movie project where I'm running down the street after a bad guy and I'm like shooting at bad guys and then that for some reason the idea of and that was Dave uh, the idea of Dave shooting bad guys and then oh just kind of shooting in people's houses and apartments and cars and just kind of uh, chipping away at a, a imp and I've always wanted to do an improv thing ever since I saw like Spinal Tap and those kind of Christopher Guest movies oh it's just if you have the right actors it could really be interesting and fun I tried an experiment where yeah I interviewed Ariadne I interviewed Jason and I wanted to see how far I could push this and could it be that they not know that they're killers and it turns out no it works out better if the actors are in collusion with me. And so it's just, it's neat to see how all the actors kind of got the joke and then manifested their own version of the joke. So Kate, what, when he kind of first approached you with this project, how did he pitch it to you? And, and what was it about it that attracted you to doing it? Yeah, no, well, again, he was like, hey, I had an actress not show up. I think it might've been same day. If not, it was like the night before. It was. And, and yeah, so I was not part of this, you know, interview to see if you want to play an assassin thing at all. I was just like, yes, 
you are the best. I will show up and play whatever you want me to play tomorrow. Um, did you think you were going to use a version that she would be into it? I was open for it to evolve, just like how the actors are open. So I was open. So it was kind of fun for me, too, to kind of to just let go of the reins with people that I loved and trusted and, and whose cuisine that I enjoyed. You being into it was funny. So I just thought, oh, let's let's run with it. And then she, you know, they they she ends up being taught how to be one of the, you know, an assassin. And like, it's great. Oh, so we get to follow her growth from not being an assassin to being an assassin to actually end up being the, the kind of villain of the whole thing. So I just the idea of that uh, was attractive and just like, wow, if I really hope Kate lets me do it because it was just a, it was wonderful to kind of see the because the, the character that Kate came up with is so, so, so sweet and so 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 nice that like it would be fun to corrupt this 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 flower so i i just it just got fun it just got good to me it was just so i guess the answer your question is uh whatever would show up and then kind of go off on what would be the coolest like conclusion and just keep on going like that and i love that and then to, to take that back to to susan's question um Yes, that super sweet little pet store girl. Like I'm more often cast as that sort of thing. And so when Kenneth called me, maybe later that week or maybe it was the next day, I don't know, to be like, hey, we're using that one. No, I want you. To, you're gonna like be in training to be an assassin. It's like again, only he would give me that opportunity. Jason, what, what, how did Kenneth pitch you this project, and what about it attracted you to want to do the role? He, he well, he pitched it for to me as as an experimental idea. P Kenny doesn't have to pitch. Uh, would you be in a film with me to me? I'll be like, yeah, sure. You, I'm going to make spaghetti. Okay. That's all I'll do. And then I'm done. Um, I, I, that's fine. I don't care. Uh, so there was no pitching. It was just like, let's try this out. Um, and then of course I was exhausted cause I had a newborn and, and, uh, and so he could have, you know, pitched a lot stupider idea at me. And I probably would have said yes to. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like kind of spitballing, like, you know, I was thinking it might be cool to do this and it would be fun to like have everybody like take themselves really seriously. And, and you know, again, as always with an idea of Kenneth, I was like, let's go. <laughs> that sounds fun. He brought me the idea of being a kind of very suburban assassin, which I thought was a, an, <laughs> an interesting and, and something that I could definitely play with. Like the whole thing was right in my wheelhouse in terms of what sounded fun to me. So it was, again, not really a pitch, more like, hey, let's do this next. Yes, I'm there. Well, and I, I honestly, I, I have to say, I wasn't like 100% sure exactly who my character was, but it was interesting that it opened the door just enough to try it in that moment and then keep discovering. Like the process was really, it bloomed from there. Ken, Ken, Ken attracted me to the project because because we'd worked together on uh, the Dark Hill, and uh, uh, actually, Kate, I think Kate recommended me to Ken. For, yeah, that's for right. The Dark Hill. Yeah, so I I knew from working on the Dark Kill that that that. Ken surrounds himself with very talented people when, when he works. So I had no question about the other members of the cast. I just, I, I, I trusted him. I trusted him inherently. I, I mean, it was, I remember it being very exciting. I remember one time my car, my transmission on my car blew out. We were shooting that night. I think it was a scene, Kate, where we were in, we had flipped over a car and we were like laying like this to try and make it seem like we had been flipped over in a car. Anyway, Ken came out and picked me up. Like it just was, there were some... There were some moments along the path that much like life where it felt like, I don't know if this thing's ever going to get finished. Uh, but I did <laughs> always tell Ken that I believed in him and, and he can reiterate this and that, that what a warrior he was in, because, you know, I've been in, in Los Angeles now 24 years and the longer that you're here, the more you respect the journey. Um, and that really not a lot of people complete a lot of things really. That's the truth, right? Um, this is now done. It's completed. And it's a beautiful, beautiful celluloid novel that he has come up with that I think he may have, I don't know, come up with a new uh, bastard cousin of Quentin Tarantino with this kind of thing. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Uh, anyway, it was, it was amazing. That's what attracted me to it was Ken. So what were your favorite 
on screen and off screen moments. The 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 times with Dave uh, w- 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 always stand out because there was a lot there there was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, I think at some point, at some point, we had shot a scene, and Ken was like, "I think." I think we shot the fuck out of that sweatshirt. We're done with that green sweatshirt. It's been in like 18 different scenes across three different movies. Um, we've got to get rid of that one and like come up with another sweatshirt. Uh, <laughs> it's such a Ken, that's such a classic. I'm sure that's a great point. So that's behind the scenes. I, 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 there, th- we had one scene with my wife in the film that that was a uh, sh- very like it just sort of it became a bit. So that's it. You're but set I a date. I will get. You are getting a, new a partner. Partner. <laughs> what? No. Nope. Now I'm done. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> There were so many little moments of truth that came from real life that turned into a movie about assassins um, that, that it would be hard to pick a single one. One scene that did not make it onto the, uh, into the movie, but I just still love, is Melanie and I got to do the most badass fight scene. Oh my God, it was so fun. There's pieces of it that are still in there. Are there little bits of it? Little bits of it. But, I mean, it was scripted, and we had a fight choreographer, and we were just, like, beating the absolute crap out of each other. It was like, oh, my God, I went into film for this. I've always wanted to beat someone up in, in a movie. So <laughs> that was so fun to shoot. I think it went the other way. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how I remember it. <laughs> I really did love that fight scene also i i have to say there was an honorable mention for a scene that i did with nana bon bon <laughs> what the fuck is that <laughs> you like it i thought it was a special occasion Okay. Yeah. He's dead. <coughs> oh god. What the what the fuck is it? It's a cattle prod. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, he's dead. It's a special fucking occasion now. I think and it's really hard. Favorite's hard, but uh I really really remember how much fun I had in that very first scene. Can you please turn those off, please? Because <laughs> Are they off? Are they fucking off? Lies of, you you lies, told me you went to church! I am spiritual. Okay, explain we, we, to me your new spiritual religion that I can't, evidently can't comprehend where murder fits Can I? In. So, Paul, what was your favorite scene, our favorite behind the scene moment? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it has to be the, the last one. That, that, that day, that day was just, it was that chaos. <laughs> That's <laughs> just fantastic. I, I don't even remember where it was going. I just remember Kate being dead and coming back from, you know, she'd been, sh- I don't know, hacked and shot and it just so many times. And it was all white. I remember having my hair in a ponytail and I was in this Zen mode. I discussed with Ken about Rick that Rick was now Zen, you know, so I was in this sort of hippy dippy scooby doo kind of headspace for that last scene when everybody else is just going bananas but i will say i i would say and i don't think i don't think it's in there i think ken told me it's not in there i loved the the car scene with with kate where i was drunk in the back seat and flipped over and the only thing you're serving and protecting is your own fucking insecurity see this is my zen shit coming out man i read people just say it just say it i'm a piggy i got a i'm a piggy i got a small dick I'm a piggy, I got a small dick. Oh, 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 oh! Fuck! Fuck! You're fucking out of your goddamn mind? Okay. DUI? I. You gotta be fucking joking with me. Tell me you're joking. I, Tell me this is a dream right now because I cannot imagine in a million years that I would ever I, fucking see you pull an amateur ass move like this. Okay. We have such good angry sex, so can we no. have angry sex with handcuffs? I always appreciated a lot. Anytime I saw uh, 
area near Melanie doing their smoking cigarettes, you know, bullets coming out of their gun, submachine gun Uzis. There's one in an apartment I remember. It's been quite some time since I saw the film where, you know, they're having a chat and then shooting and having a chat and smoking and shooting. And uh, and then the, the one with Frosty, I'll always remember is with the baby. You know, he's walking his baby to the car and talking. Yeah, this life, you know, it's, just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's absurd. It's, it's, uh... Hey guys. Can I help you with something? Uh, yeah, man. We were uh, just locked out of our car. Do you think you could like help us out? Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, I got the keys to my car right here. Oh, is that right, mother? Oh shit! <laughs> but it is cool being a dad. I'm gonna get serious for a moment. It's kind of ahead of its time, because that kind of stuff does happen now. Right. You get random shit. I'm grateful that I can laugh at it in this particular environment. And it is very funny, but I also think it's a little prescient and that's a little scary. Uh, so you're a little ahead of the time, Ken, in a macabre kind of way. Was there a funny detail or backstory that you made up about your character while improvising that people might not know or realize, but it was in the back of your head? My process never really involved getting a backstory. Uh, uh, I, it, it was more of a, I, Frosty was kind of a cipher. Um, and so we figured out, uh, Frosty's story together at different times. I think Ken would just, uh, come up with another situation to shoot and we would shoot it. And then that would either make it into part of Frosty's story or not. Um, I was, uh, unique of the, of the five of us, I think in that, um, uh, I didn't get a, to pair up with someone for for quite a bit of time. Um, uh, Melanie and Ariadne became sisters, and 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 uh, Kate and, and and Paul became lovers, and and then there was me with a kid and, a, and an off screen wife. Um, that then we had then a little scene, but then so it was always about what's Frosty doing, um, and and I I did a lot. And only some of it was in the movie. Uh, it ended up in the final cut. It, all of it was in the movie at some point and then, and then came. So <laughs> I don't even know who I really am because I don't think I've seen <laughs> the, the latest cut. I mean, I guess the secret that I never uh, told anyone really is that, um, you know, he really believed in twin flames and soulmates. And he believed that he had found her and uh, that they were gonna have a family. And um, the further along in the film that it went, the more obvious it sort of became that he was lying to himself, uh, that they were actually a little more different than he thought at, at the core kind of thing. Yeah, that, that last scene at the tea house, it really felt, I felt confused, very confused as a character. I was, I was, I was really lost in the world. Uh, so for me, <laughs> it became a, a, a character and a story of someone who just became more and more muddled in life. I'm, I'm interested to know if there was a moment on this particular piece where you felt yourself grow as an artist, really grow. If there's one moment that stuck out where you're like, wow, I just felt something move. How about that? I have one. The arguing and the emotional stuff, like I was, I was going through a breakup myself, but I was like wanting to channel that sadness and frustration into something. I'm never going to be done paying for Rockstar, am I? No! right now it was a really great opportunity to be able to draw on the experience i was having in real life and put it into something that was really meaningful it was once in a lifetime i couldn't quit on it because just i would just see those scenes that were so good that i was like okay i gotta make something out of this but i kept on measuring it up against I wanted to be, I just, I wanted to be special and kept trying to make it more special. And so that's why I would keep asking for scenes uh, until finally it could go down to the Shakespearean crazy massacre scene and finally just kind of finish out everyone's storyline. So, but yeah, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm glad people stuck it out and we got to, 
do something that I feel that at least I myself I'm very proud of. I'm very proud of it. You know, I didn't intend this for the for this to be my first feature length project, but I'm glad it was it was this, and I'm glad it was with all these kind of alumni that I collected from all my short films and and rando experiments. So, yeah, it's a family thing. Thank you, Kenneth. Thank you. I, I expressed earlier there were moments of frustration, but in the end, I am grateful for every single second of it to be bonded as a family with this group of humans and to, um, you know, experience. Yeah. I think it's great we talk about that because I feel like Hollywood only and Facebook, Twitter, we only show like the good things. But life, when you want to do something, when you have a dream, a passion, it's not easy. It's hard and you got to work for it. When you get it, it's that much sweeter, you know? But we don't talk about it. We just, everybody thinks life's going to be great. And so then when it gets hard, you quit. But it's, so it's good to hear stories of people who persevered and created this beautiful piece of art. It's just also absolutely true that it couldn't have happened without Kenneth and Mariana at the end yeah. of it. And without this incredible group of people. Like you can't, you, you can't get away from, you gotta, you gotta go and show up and. Well, I, I just, I knew, I knew a talented bunch of actors. So it was tempting to just kind of try an experiment and see what shook out. And it, it, it shook out. It took longer to shake, but no, I knew that eventually it would be, it, it could not be anything, you know, it, it would be something. That's why I wasn't sure if it was a web series or a feature or whatever. But once, once I kind of started to see the pieces flow, I realized like, nah, this is this special group of people, you know, can, I, I can edit together something I think really, really uh, special and neat. And so I think that's what we got. The word that has come up for me in this talk is trust, because mm -hmm. we all had to trust you and trust ourselves and trust each other just kind of radically in order to keep showing up when you had something else you wanted to do and you'd been at it for six years or, you know, we're doing a scene that was difficult or whatever. We all just had to trust each other, mm. which is beautiful. There wasn't one time where I thought that it was never going to get done. Never, never. And, and so there's, there's the trust right there. Cause obviously we're not going to, you know, put our faith in a 10 year project if it's not going to get completed. And, um, and I'm really grateful you stuck to your vision, you know, whatever people think of this, it's you, man, it's you and it screams you. And there's not enough of that in this world. Uh, take extricating opinions. It doesn't matter. You know, it is, it's a wacky piece of art and I'm damn proud to be part of it. Oh, I really enjoyed the movie, you guys. It yeah, was fun, so it was silly, it was really entertaining. And I enjoyed meeting you all and learning about this great movie. Um, I hope you enjoyed yourselves as well. And thank you for your honesty and candor. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, great. everybody. Great to see you. Great to see you. Bye, everybody. I hope to hear your voices soon. <laughs> you all, I miss you. Oh, my God, what a journey. <laughs> awesome we miss talk. you, too. And I'm sure you'll hear that. <laughs>